up, YouTube? My name's Jack Armstrong. They call me Jack Daddy. It is fantastic to see you today. We love Jesus, we love our family, and we love the outdoors, and we like to build things. Uh, so come along as we build things. Come along as we try them out. Come along, and I'll show you how you can build them, too. And don't forget, like and subscribe. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Oh, yeah! What's up, YouTube? Jack Daddy Customs coming at you with another one today. I got my helper, my first mate, Ram, right here. Uh, let's show him who we're with. Look at that. Jack Attack. Fishing shirt right there. Uh, today, we're going to show you how you can make a gaff. A lightweight gaff uh, out of a golf club from a thrift store. And it's got the Cuda style head on it. We made a couple of them, different sizes. I might use one on the kayak, one on the boat. Might put them both on the boat in case we got to double up. So stay tuned. And uh, we're gonna show you how you can build one of these from the thrift store for just a few bucks. We're gonna take this golf club that we bought at the thrift store uh, for a uh, for dollar. Got it for a dollar. Nice golf club with a graphite shaft. Uh, we're gonna take this and we're gonna take this piece of stainless rod. So it's a quarter inch stainless rod. Uh, I got it at Fasten All. Uh, for a four foot piece, it was like 14 bucks. The cool thing about making your own gaff is you can make it whatever style you want. So. CUDA sells some really nice gaffs, and if you look at the CUDA gaff, uh, the design is such that um, it's different than just a regular old hoop. They say that that makes it a lot better. I don't know, uh, but it costs a lot more than most gaffs. So I'm going to use that design and try to make one very similar to the CUDA gaff. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to draw out the shape that we want on a piece of paper, and then uh, we're gonna put this in a vise and start bending it and then we're gonna lay it on top of that draw until we match up what that gaff looks like. Alright, so this is what we've drawn. Basically, it's about two and a half inches from here to here. We're not trying to go stick tuna in the northeast. Uh, we're fishing in the Gulf of Mexico, so we're gonna stab some kingfish and stuff like that. But uh, basically, this is the design that we're gonna use and they say that uh, it's easier to stick and apparently it like holds the fish better, less coming out, I don't know. But uh, all I know is it's real expensive, so we're going to try it and see, uh, see how it goes. Alright, so the key is just take your time. Uh, you want to take your time and uh, so you got your drawing and you know you want to start with this side so you bend that bend first and then you'll come back and bend this so if you'll see I've got it uh, bent just like my drawing now we're gonna work on this one back here so we're gonna kind of get a mark with our finger and do this sharp bend and it's gonna be a series of several to make this shape I think So, bent at the vise, got a rod, got a bent. Uh, you'll see that it's just right on our drawing right there. We're gonna cut this end off probably like right in there. So I'm gonna use the porta band to cut the end of this golf club off as well. And what I wanna do is, I want it as long as possible, but at the same time, I don't wanna have to grind a whole lot off of my gaff hook. So I'm gonna try to figure out, cause this shaft gets wider, the closer it gets to the handle, right? So I'm gonna try to figure out uh, where it'd be a good compromise for the diameter of my hook, which is a quarter inch, and the diameter of this, and how much less, how much less I'll have to uh, taper that in. So now what we gotta do is we've gotta taper our gaff hook in order to fit inside of this a good bit. We want to come, you know, up a couple of inches. Uh, so we make sure we get a good tight bond in there. Hey 
All right, so once you get it cut off, one thing you need to do is, uh, since we tapered that in, right, we want it to be nice and smooth, uh, we're gonna take a countersink bit and we're just gonna run it on the end of this real quick, uh, just so maybe it'll fit up on there nice and tight and smooth. So it don't take much, you just want just a little bit, just so it'll ride that contour just right. All right, now what we need to do is make a few uh, grooves and stuff in the end of our piece that we tapered. So this is the piece we tapered. We're just gonna cut a few notches in that just so that it'll sit inside that really good and that epoxy, as it sits in there, will hold into those grooves. All right, so if you see there, well, they're not very deep notches. They're just very shallow, but they're deep enough to hold epoxy. That's all you want is just something to grab onto. Uh, you know, this is already kind of narrow, so you don't want to cut all the way through it or you lose some of your strength. It's still stinking strong, it's stainless, but uh, just a few notches, just like that, all the way around, that's gonna help hold that epoxy. Now what we're fixing to do is we're gonna take our porta band and we're gonna cut at an angle to save us some grinding. And that's going to be our angle for our point. And then we're going to take the flat disc and make it into a really sharp point. All right, so this is the final step, really. Uh, I'm going to show you just a few things I do to kind of make it a little bit better. But, uh, man, once you, you could epoxy that hook in there and be done. So uh, I'm going to show you what to do. This is what I'm using, some JB Weld uh, Clear Weld. It's just a two-part epoxy. Squeeze it into a container, mix it up, and then you've got to get that epoxy inside the shaft. And, uh, you know, you can even wipe a little bit on this, and then you just shove it in there, and, uh, you know, it'll hold. So uh, I'm using a plastic fork to mix it up with. I'm using a little medicine cup. I got kids, so I got about a thousand of these things laying around. And then I went to the local pharmacy. They hooked me up with one of these little syringes, just a little medical syringe. And that's gonna, we're gonna suck that epoxy up, squeeze it into this, into this golf club. And then that way we make sure we got a good bit of epoxy inside of this thing. Um, and then while it's drying, we're gonna set it like this to dry. That way that epoxy will run down while it's drying. And uh, it will surround this inside of there, like this, and then due to that taper, there's no way this will be able to pull out. All right, one thing we need to do before we epoxy it is get you a Q-tip, some alcohol, and just clean it up real good. All the way up, twist it until you like the way it's sitting. And then I like to just make sure some of that epoxy is all around the edge of that so it's nice and smooth. You don't have to worry about anything coming off, catching on it. Nice and smooth. And then what we want to do is make sure it's good and tight in there. I'm gonna set it like this, at least for a while, until it sets. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow that epoxy to, thanks to gravity, to go all the way down and fill in all those voids on the back side of that taper. All right, so it's the next day and our epoxy is dry. Everything looks really good. This is our gaff hook, our golf club shaft and it's ready to go now. So uh, you can just do it just like this if you want. What I'm gonna do though, is I fabricated me like a little aluminum cap that I'll epoxy on the back of this just to make everything air and water tight. And then I will use some of this wind grip for a fishing rod and I'll wrap maybe down to about right here just so you got a good grip. Uh, that'll be probably better than this golf club grip maybe. So. Uh, that's what we're about to do now. 
Alright, so the first thing I'm gonna do uh, with my grip, obviously I've already got it cut off. Use a knife, cut that off. And then uh, I got it sanded back here where I'm gonna epoxy this. I got the inside of this wrapped up a little bit. And then I'm just gonna clean it off with some uh, alcohol. And then I'm gonna mix up some uh, epoxy once I figure out like where it's gonna go. And I'm gonna wrap this down to about right here. And then then I'll epoxy this on there to wherever it meets it. And then that way, a little bit of epoxy will be on the very back end of this to hold it in place. Here it is. This is the finished gap. So, got my bigger handle, let it ride in the rod holder, wind grip, graphite shaft, thing super light, stainless hook with the CUDA style bend on it. I mean, that's a little over four foot long. So, uh, you know, you can go look up how much a CUDA gap is at four foot long and uh, see how much money you can save by doing it yourself. We got some 5 16 fuel hose and it's like real, you know, reinforced, whatever. But we got about six inches or so, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, slice about half of it off, starting about right there and ending about right there. And then we're gonna feed part of that all the way over our tube onto our shaft, and then that way this is gonna give us something to protect our point with. All right, so now you're gonna take this kind of shorter end and we're gonna slide it all the way up and over. Now be careful not to poke yourself, it's just poking. So this is the reason you use 5 sixteenths instead of one quarter. Because obviously this is one quarter. And one quarter would be perfect tight fit, but you would never be able to squeeze that over the edge of this. Especially when you get down here by the shaft. So when you get by the shaft, you wanna turn this around so that this will ride just like that. And then you just wanna get that down there all the way as far as you can, nice and tight. <sighs> Good, all right, there you go. So now it's on there, it's out of the way. And you got a nice point cover, just like that. It's always there. Pop it off, you're ready to gaff a fish. <laughs>